A very warm welcome to all our viewers and welcome to a new episode of Africa Today, our show bringing you all the latest news and events happening all around the African continent. My name is Andrew Meher and I'll be joining you for today's edition. We begin straight away with news about the Tanzanian Julius Nyerere Dam, which is a model for cooperation between African countries. This statement was made by Cairo as the inauguration ceremony of the dam's lake filling took place. The dam was built by a consortium of Egyptian companies in cooperation with the Tanzanian government. We have more details in this report. The Julius Nyerere hydropower plant and dam JNHPP in Tanzania was the focus of a meeting discussing the impact of the dam on African states. Egypt concluded the construction of the Tanzanian dam's main body. The JNHPP, the largest of its kind in the Nile Basin country, was built by a consortium of Egyptian companies that includes the Arab Contractors Company and Sweetie Electric under the supervision of the Egyptian authorities. The project was financed by the Tanzanian government at the cost of $3 billion. The construction of the JNHPP concluded in October 2022 and was followed by the first filling of its reservoir two months later. The mega project is expected to double the energy production in Tanzania. Cairo has stressed that the construction of the dam serves as a model for fruitful cooperation between Egypt and sisterly African nations. And still with our news, Japan's uh, chief cabinet secretary, Hirokazu Matsuno, said on Tuesday that the prime minister, Fumio Kishida, will visit Egypt, Ghana, Kenya and Mozambique in late April to early May. The visit will come just weeks before Japan hosts the Group of Seven Nations Summit. We have more details in this report. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is to visit Egypt as part of four-leg tour in Africa. The visit will include Ghana, Kenya and Mozambique starting from late April until early May. The visit comes weeks before Japan hosts a summit of the Group of Seven Nations. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsunu, the government's top spokesman, said at a regular press conference that confirming cooperation with major African countries to tackle global issues is significant for Japan, which holds the G7 presidency for this year. With the G7 summit, which will be held in the Prime Minister's home constituency, fast approaching Kishida was expressed his willingness to strengthen ties with the Global South, a term that collectively refers to developing nations south of the equator. Since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, many developing countries, including in Africa, have sought to avoid taking sides. Matsuno did not elaborate on the itinerary of Kishida's tour to the continent. Still with our news, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres arrived in Mogadishu on Tuesday to kick off a brief visit to Somalia, scarred by protracted armed conflict and climate disasters. Somalia has imposed a security lockdown on Mogadishu for the visit, with most roads closed and public transport restricted. We have more details in this report. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was given a red carpet welcome at the Somali capital's airport by Foreign Minister Abshir Omar Huruse. Guterres' trip comes with the country in the grip of a calamitous drought that has driven many to the brink of famine, while the government is also engaged in a major offensive to put down a bloody insurgency. Somalia has imposed a security lockdown on Mogadishu for the visit, with most roads closed and public transport restricted. The UN chief, who previously visited Somalia in March 2017, is due to hold talks with political leaders and visit a camp for internally displaced people. The UN has launched a $2.6 billion appeal for humanitarian aid for the troubled Horn of Africa nation, but it is currently only 13% funded. Five straight failed rainy seasons in parts of Somalia as well as Kenya and Ethiopia have led to the worst drought in four decades, wiping out livestock and crops and forcing at least 1.7 million people from their homes. While famine thresholds have not been reached in Somalia, the UN says about half its population will need humanitarian assistance this year, with 8.3 million affected by the drought. A report by the UN and the Somali government released in March said the drought may have led to 43,000 excess deaths last year, with children under the age of five accounting for half the victims. One of the poorest countries on the planet, Somalia, has been racked by decades of civil war, political violence and a bloody insurgency by Al-Qaeda affiliate Al-Shabaab.
لكل الناس دايما حلم تحلم بيه وانا كان حلمي على قدي ونفسي اعيش ولما رمت عليك حملي شاركتني فيه خلاص فاضي لسكة تكة تكة على آخر السكة لسه تكة كان ناس كتير شكة 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 وشوفوا رحنا لفين وخلاص فاضي لسكة تكة تكة على آخر السكة لسه تكة كان ناس كتير شكة 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 وشوفوا رحنا لفين يلا مصريين همتكم ده الحلم خلاص فاضل عليه تكه Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and still with you and our edition of Africa Today. We're delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest, Dr. Uf Ghaffar, our political analyst. A very good afternoon to you, doctor. Good afternoon to you. Mark. Thank you very much for joining us, doctor. Let me start by asking you, how would you describe cooperation between Japan and Africa, especially in light of the upcoming visit uh, by the Japanese uh, uh, pri uh, prime minister to uh, several African countries, including Egypt? Everybody now is looking at Africa. Africa is uh, today the youngest continent, the wealthiest continent, full of resources, natural resources, mineral resources, human resources, not exploited. And uh, 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 they need a partnership, they need financing, they need technology, they need know-how. And this can be provided by big countries like uh, uh, all the industrialized world. Uh, and uh, Japan is no exception. So uh, uh, that is why everybody now is looking at Africa uh, as the perfect uh, partner for the future. Absolutely. Now, Japan has pledged uh, Dr. Raouf 30 billion U.S. dollars investments in Africa and is providing co-financing with up to 5 billion U.S. dollars together with the AFDP to improve, you know, lots of projects uh, and the lives of citizens of African countries. How do you read these numbers? Absolutely. I mm. mean, 5 billion um, is nothing. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Africa uh, needs uh, 100 times the figure and even more. Yes. So this is a very humble figure. But at least it marks the beginning, uh, and it shows that everybody is interested. And I'm sure that it will continue, and uh, money will keep pouring in, uh, not only money, but uh, partnership uh, uh, and uh, know-how, technology, etc., etc., for the benefit of the two sides. Mm -hmm. What fields of development in Africa do you think, Dr. Raouf, would benefit most from Japanese expertise? Well, I mean, Japanese, they have technology in, in, in everywhere, uh, maybe, maybe mining. Uh, I'm sure industry, probably industry will be, in my opinion. Uh, they, they might not be very much interested in uh, infrastructure projects mm. as much as they will uh, in uh, uh, industry. And I think this, is, this will be the, uh, the, uh, the things that uh, Japan will look forward to invest or to partner with in Africa. Absolutely. And how do you see, you know, uh, the, the establishment of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement impacting ties with other world uh, powers, doctor? You can say that again, please. I did not see you. Well. Yes, I was asking about the establishment of the African uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement. How do you see such uh, an agreement impacting ties with other international blocs? Well, it will facilitate the movement mm. between one state and the other in Africa. Uh, it will give an, another advantage and edge to any investor that uh, he will not be limited to the country he is investing in, but he can spread uh, his market 
to surrounding countries by using such uh, agreements. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will do good for Africa uh, in particular and for any investor or any country that comes in in general. Indeed. Finally, Doctor, how do you compare the level of Asian-African cooperation with other countries, you know, like Europe, the United States, Latin America? Uh, Asia had the, the uh, priority. They came in uh, first. Uh, China started, Russia, and now Japan. I think they represent more than uh, 50 or 60 percent of the investment in Africa today. They are increasing. Uh, uh, the, uh, Europe was a little late, and the United States was the late. But uh, of course, the Asian uh, uh, powers and the Asian uh, economic powers have been uh, pioneers in Africa, Indeed. and I think they will continue to do so for the coming years. Absolutely, Mr. Uh, Dr. Rauf Ghaffar, our political analyst and our guest for this afternoon. I'd like to thank you very much, sir, for your time and insight. And that wraps up our edition of Africa Today. Thank you for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.